Hi, I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors Legal Hotline lawyer. And in keeping with the extraordinary number of transaction coordinator questions we received lately, here is yet another. Designated broker asks the question, what do we do on our end? We don't have the transaction coordinator, but the firm that we have a cross sale with does. And they have instructed us to direct all correspondence through this transaction coordinator. The transaction coordinator is not identified in the contract as an agent for the parties. They're not disclosed as an agent at all, but our firm is instructed to direct all communications to the transaction coordinator. Should we refuse? That's the question that I was asked. And the answer to that question is no. You shouldn't refuse, but you should make your communication both contractually effective and realistic, efficient. Let's, let, let me let's say it that way. It needs to be contractually effective and efficient. How do you do both of those things? Well, remember what the contract requires. The contract requires that if you're going to make delivery of documents under the purchase and sale agreement, particularly by email, but, but any document that you're going to deliver, you have to make delivery to the broker on the other side of the transaction and their firm. So if we're emailing, you have to email to the broker's email address identified on the face of the form 21, and you have to email to their firm to the address identified for the firm on the face of the Form 21. If the broker on the other side of the transaction gives you a completely third party, a tr transaction coordinator, and says, I want all of the communication directed to this person, then you, broker, you're the person now sending the emails. Instead of sending just to the broker and the firm on the other side of the transaction, you're gonna deliver to three different entities. You're going to deliver to the broker and the firm on the other side of the transaction so that you can make a contractually effective delivery. And you're also going to email to the transaction coordinator that the broker on the other side of the transaction has asked you to include in the communications. And with that, you're going to make it an efficient delivery. It's not up to you to determine whether the other side of the transaction is in compliance with Washington law. They may not be. That transaction coordinator may be doing services that they're not uh, licensed to perform, or they may be providing services outside of the supervision of the designated broker on the other side of the transaction. That's not your concern. Your concern is getting your client to a successful closing. And one of the best ways to do that is to work efficiently with the brokers on the other side of the transaction. So if the brokers on the other side of the transaction make a request of you, to include their transaction coordinator or their administrative assistant or whatever they might identify this person as in your communications, don't include that third person to the exclusion of the broker or the DB. Instead, include that third person along with the broker and the DB from the other side of the transaction. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions about it, send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a member of the Washington Realtors.